everybody! I'm Argle Fumpf, and I'm playing Immortal Love, The Price of a Miracle. I think we're coming up on the end of the bonus game here. Yep, so we are, we are, oh man, this is not good. Rusted and twisted, just like the Baroness. She, she was kind of a twisted person. Okay, so... I am I ah, blah, 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 I'm I'm confusing myself. We are we're trying to leave. We're trying to leave here and I have the carriage key. We want to get the artifact so the baroness does not. Yeah, so the baroness has actually ordered us to get her this this artifact. So we're we're kind of like a secret double agent here if, if you want to think of it that way. I prefer to think of it as somebody who who made a mistake and is making up for it. Water fights fire. Sure does. Let me get some water. Oh, but before I finish solving the puzzles, I should try to find portrait pieces, right? Are there any portrait pieces on this particular screen? There is one. Yay! Okay, so I found all the portrait pieces in the bonus game, but I think, yeah, I missed two portrait pieces in the main game, so I don't get to solve, don't get to solve that jigsaw puzzle. Oh well. So the Baroness's man doesn't want us to leave. Hmm. I think I know what I'm going to do here. We saw this board, which is broken, right? I use a crowbar to smash it. And then I'm going... Oh, I use a crowbar to pry it off. And now I can cross. Really, I should have just jumped over that, I think. Uh-oh! Lightning! I can't hold him off for long. The artifact is making him strong. Break it! I've got it. I've got it. Okay. Use these tongs to open this up. Okay, gonna smash this artifact. How? How do I smash it? Oh yeah, with my magic power. Okay, put the relic in. Oh, we better check these instructions. Put the relic in. Oh I, oh, I didn't even get a chance to read it before it threw me into a puzzle. Okay, so using arrows, rotate the labyrinth base to move both tokens to the end. When a token lands on a colored gate, it opens the gate. I think I see how this is going to go here. So I need to get this on the blue gate in order to free up that other token piece. Yay! Okay, so I opened up that gate, and that gate is open forever now, right? Right. Great. So next I need to get this token piece through here, but let me have it land on that red gate. Uh-oh. No, it looks like when you open up a gate, it does not stay open forever. Good to know. So let me get this to the red gate so I can free the other token piece. It's kind of cool. Okay, so I need to get. Now I need to focus on getting this piece over here to the red gate because now the red gate's open. Yes, yes, yes. Please let me get through the red gate. Yes! Now I just need to get you over to the yellow gate, huh? Yep, landing that on the yellow gate. Oh no! Uh-oh, this is going to be tricky. Let's see, I'm going to have to move this piece up and down these stairs here, kind of, in order to uh, get it to where the yellow gate would be when it's opened. Yes? Do I have to get both token pieces to the exit? I think I might have to, in which case I'm doing this. Getting this to the purple gate. Oh no, oh no, okay. I'm gonna drop that off there. I'm gonna have to get this piece over here. Mm-hmm. See how I've kind of got it? I had to kind of put it in that little hole in order to get it through the gate. Great. Okay, so now both token pieces can land on the end at the exact same time. Neat puzzle. I like it. 
long and complicated, yes, but still neat. Nice job. Now we can hide the parts so the Baroness can't find them. Watch out! Oh! Oh, lightning! No, don't use that thing on me. I'd rather die than become one of those things. You have to finish what we started. Hide the artifact. Dear Greg, you've always been like a father to me. I'd like to sell you that artifact. Yep. So that is how... That's that's the storyline behind the game. Cool. So so that's how Greg... I mean, that's how Conrad got the artifact to sell to Greg. Uh, you know, and it, we, we saw that was, that was how the, the game actually started. So that's pretty cool. Got some concept art. Ooh, man. Nasty monsters. Heh. <laughs> uh, Schultz ended up pretty much the same. Like, that concept art did not change at all. Oh, Conrad. Conrad just grew more and more handsome as the concept art continued. This is kind of neat. I like this. I like this concept. I always like looking at the concept art and seeing how it changes. Oh wow, that is so nowhere near what it was originally. Cool. And I could do hidden objects challenges, but why would I want to? Find the missing puzzle- wait! I can go back and find the missing puzzle pieces? Yes! Oh, I love it. Okay, so these are the two, uh, they weren't missing, I just forgot to look for them. And is that it? No, 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 one more. There's one more that I forgot to find here. Ooh, this looks tricky, found it. Well, this is a neat feature, lets you go back and find all the, uh, collectibles you didn't find. I understand that's more common in, um... It's getting to be more common. Uh, uh, I, I first, or, or, ugh. anyway, this isn't the only game that lets you go back and find the hidden collectibles that you missed. Uh, I, I think I think pe people are starting to expect that from from their uh, casual games. It's like I don't want to replay the entire game just to find all the pieces, right? This is so much more convenient. And his name is Eric Hansen, the apprentice of uh, the well-known magician. He spent five years studying magic tricks and stories of the past. That's how he learned about the Dragon Knights. So deeply impressed by his legends, he became obsessed with the idea of becoming a knight himself. And that's why he decided to help us, because he's kind of like a knight in training. So, that is it for Immortal Love, The Price of a Miracle. I thought that was an interesting game. Overall thoughts. Uh, you know, I think I liked the first game better because the first game had more to deal with um, uh, the romance and the love, and I really liked the time travel aspect of the first game. Now, this game, I did kind of like the uh, the mystery aspect to it. You know, wondering, is Conrad a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Because he's clearly involved with these bad guys at some point in time. That was neat, and it was also kind of neat how the uh, the Baroness turned out to be a villain, and then we had that train segment trying to fight back to her uh, castle. That was neat. I liked that. That was a that was a pretty good segment of the game. Uh, I think towards the end, like the final third, the game sort of just took a U-turn and sort of became a totally different game whatsoever. In in that uh, you know, instead of with the love and stopping the bad guys, all of a sudden we are fighting this ancient evil dragon because of an ancient order of dragon slayers, and that was kind of that was kind of uh, out there. I, I, I should say. I think, uh... Mm, yeah, yeah. If the, uh, the puzzles in the final game, the uh, final third of the game, were amazing. And uh, what I really liked about this game were a lot of the, uh, you know, longer extended puzzles. Like, that that puzzle is good. Um, oh, that puzzle is a monster. I was not good at that. Not good at that puzzle either. This was a neat puzzle. That was a neat puzzle. And you s this was also a neat puzzle. So the puzzles are nice. This was a great, long, nice, simple puzzle. I liked it. These puzzles were cool, too. So, 
So overall, I'd say, yeah, this is a good game. Uh, not as good as the original. I like the original a little bit more because of the time travel and the storyline. Uh, this game has more of a darker, scarier storyline, which is fine. It's just, I like lovey-dovey romance and time travel. And y you can tell I'm a, I'm a big fan of these, uh, you know, romance fairy tale games. So thank you for watching my video walkthrough, everybody. I hope you enjoyed watching me play Immortal Love, The Price of a Miracle.